Hey guys, it's me again, Chris, and today I'm going to show you how you can use an old mobile phone as a secondary monitor for your computer. Now, you may have different reasons why you'd want to do this, but in my case, uh, the reason why I wanted to have this monitor is because I want to see how my hardware is performing while I'm editing videos or, or playing games. There's a bunch of apps or programs in your computer that can do that for you on screen. Um, I don't really like it, but like MSI Afterburner and Riva, they're very efficient, but I don't like it because it's not that it, it's obtrusive on the actual screen. I, I just don't like seeing any other information uh, on top of what I'm actually doing. Uh, it's just, you know, a personal preference. So uh, since I don't have uh, another monitor or one of those Raspberry Pi screens. A lot of people have been doing that. They've been using those Raspberry Pi screens with HDMI connectivity as a, as a monitor on their CPU. So, but since I don't have one of those, I researched and I found an app that's called Space Desk that will allow me to do it. So luckily, uh, I, I was cleaning up my stuff the other day and I saw that I still had I still have the Samsung S3 phone powered on and got really excited so I jumped right into into doing it. So I'm going to show you how I did it uh, in this video. Uh, I'm going to show you how to install the program on your computer and the app on your phone and sync them together so they show you the information that I'm basically seeing right now or, or at least do something similar. Now. I, I would have preferred to put this phone inside the actual case. I think it's going to look cooler. However, since this is an old phone, for some reason, the port will only allow me to charge it. It won't allow for any data transfer. Uh, I don't think it's the drivers because I have updated the drivers. I even installed Samsung keys on my phone. Yeah, as you can see here, that's the that's a port, and that's the actual cable. I, I leave it charging, uh, just so you know, it's not heating up anyway. So let's jump right into the video. So the first thing that you need to do is go to your phone, okay, and you need to download this app on your App Store or Google Play. It's called Space Desk. So just download it and uh, pretty much install it on your phone. Well, it's gonna do it automatically, anyways. Once you have that, you're gonna you're gonna see this interface every time you try to launch it. And right now, since my computer's set up uh, to to connect to this mobile phone, it's actually detecting my PC. It says Chris Ryzen. Now I'm gonna switch to the computer and show you how to basically uh, install the drivers for for Space Desk on your computer so you can make this work. So on your computer, what you need to do now is go to this website for Space Desk. Spacedesk.com, I'm oh, sorry, spacedesk.net slash user manual. Just go there, uh, go to the home page, and download the actual driver on your computer and simply run it. It's going to download an executable file. Just run it, trust it, and to test if you're actually able to install it properly, well, all you need to do is go to the control panel under programs and features and show you that's the space desk drivers or the, the driver is actually installed uh, to your computer. Now, I'm not going to go in, in detail on how to do that. If you're watching the video, you probably know how to install drivers and other programs anyways. So I trust you guys know how to do that already. So, uh, yeah, so the next thing we need to do is simply go under Programs and Features. You can see it's installed. It's Space Desk Windows driver, and it comes with an actual interface. 
uh, I'll show you the GUI as well. And what you can see on the GUI, as you can see here, it shows the name of the computer, how many active connections it has, or how many devices are connected to it currently, and how they're connected. Uh, they're connected wirelessly in this case. Um, I'll tell you more about, or I told you earlier about connecting it via USB, but unfortunately, I don't have that option. The port on the actual phone, the USB port, I mean, is not in a very good condition. You can charge it, but can't pretty much transfer data or, or it can't be used for, for, for data, for information. I, I, I updated the Samsung drivers, I installed Samsung keys, nothing is working. I can't make it work on my computer, but that's fine. Uh, I can connect it wirelessly though. Though based on reviews, it's actually better to have it connected via USB because it's more stable, less lags. And if I had that option, I could def definitely leave this phone inside the actual case. Uh, the problem is, I, in a in a situation where you're connected wirelessly, since the actual connection isn't that reliable, if anything goes wrong, you're gonna have to maneuver or manipulate the phone, relaunch the app, disconnect, etc. All those stuff you're gonna have to do that on the actual phone. So leaving it inside a case, taking it out every time there's a problem is cumbersome. Now that we have that out of the way, I'm going to show you now what it looks like once you connect your phone to your computer. Just tap on that. Okay, well, it depends, depends on you what kind of orientation you want. But I usually do it this way because the USB charging port here is going to be on the left side. What I, and what I do is I situate this phone on on the edge of my of my CPU near near where the ports are so I could have it just plugged in uh, and let it run uh, it doesn't really get that hot what I what I do is I just adjust the brightness level to automatic and it pretty much you know dims itself and aside from Wi-Fi there's really no other means of connecting to this phone since I don't have a SIM card uh, in it anyways. Now the, the, the downside is I can't connect this via USB to my computer. I wish I can, I'd prefer it that way. There's, there's you know, almost zero lags if you do it that way. And based, based on what I've seen uh, in, in this configuration using Wi-Fi connection, you tend to get disconnected every once in a while. So I, I didn't really like that. But that's fine. Uh, it's gonna pretty much do what I needed to do anyways while I'm playing. So, or, or while, while I'm at least, you know, trying to edit videos. I, I can see the temperature. I can see um, the voltage, how much strain it puts on my GPU and CPU and all that good stuff. So that's it. Uh, for the actual setup and now i'm going to show you show it to you in action okay so let me show you the actual phone and the monitor in action so basic stuff you go to your display settings uh you, you can modify how 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 the or, or what the resolution is would be on your primary monitor and your secondary monitor you could modify if it's going to be an extended screen or it's going to show the same screen on, on both devices. In this case, this is an extended, extended screen. So at this point, now that I have everything set up, uh, what you'd want to do is you'd want to download a program that would give you a good visual representation of how your, your hardware is performing. Uh, there's a bunch out there. There's CPU ID, HW monitor, but the one that I I really like is the NZXT Cam. This is the NZXT Cam. It's designed for NZXT devices, uh, particularly the 
aside from the case, uh, I'm assuming the the AIO. Now, NZXT is a case manufacturer and other peripherals for your computer. I was planning to build my computer with an NZXT case. However, it's kind of expensive here. So I opted for the deep cool case. Anyways, I digress. Let's go back. So let's get back to the video. So what you will see here is monitoring. You're going to see your CPU, GPU, RAM, network storage, everything that, that pretty much is happening on your system uh, in real time. So once you have everything set up, all you need to do is drag and drop this uh, program on the side of your screen until it you know, goes to your secondary monitor, which, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm going to adjust the brightness on the phone so you have a better view. Oh yeah, and by the way, it acts as a touch screen as well, so you can pretty much manipulate the, the program from the actual phone itself as such. Drag and drop it to the top and it should be good. So yeah, now I can see how my my computer is doing while I'm editing videos or, or playing games. You just have to look at the side of the screen and there you go. Uh, as you can see, it's basically real time. But like I mentioned earlier, the downside with this kind of wireless connectivity is it does fail every once in a while. So I'm I'm gonna see if there's any way for me to make this USB port work, but I highly doubt it. I think I'm pretty much stuck with this. I'm planning on on using one of those Raspberry Pi screens as I mentioned earlier. Uh but that's gonna be for another video. Once I get the punch to do it, I'll do it. I'll show you how to to do it step by step. I'm planning on finding a way how to mod the actual case as well, so it look it would look really nice uh, once everything is up and running. So that's basically it. How, that's how you set up Space Desk to work with your old smartphone and and your computer. Uh, it's a simple yet elegant solution to what I was trying to accomplish, and that is to have uh, a visual representation of how my hardware is doing without actually uh, switching tabs or switching programs. So I hope you enjoyed the video. hope you liked it. And if you did, hit like and subscribe. And share it with your friends if you think this is something they can do. Um, I really wish I could I could have put this inside a case. Uh, it doesn't really heat up that much. At first, that was an that was an issue that I was worried about, but I left it overnight under stress. Uh, even plugged into the USB port or cable, even while charging overnight, it didn't really get that hot. So this can actually work, but you know. Take that with a grain of salt. It's it's still a phone. It still runs on battery. So if it heats up too much, there's a possibility of this ex exploding. So I guess it's a blessing in disguise that that I I'm pretty much stuck into leaving it outside of the case. So I get to feel it every once in a while. See if it's getting too hot, or I can I could just simply unplug everything, shut it off. You know, throw it like a grenade. If, if I think it's about to explode. But yeah, as you can see, it's still performing, doing its, doing its thing. I, I can switch off my main monitor, and this thing will still run. It would still show me how everything is doing, so it's very useful. Uh, it's a pretty awesome experiment, and, and I hope uh, it helps someone out. If it did, like I said, you know, just go ahead and do it. You know, just follow what I did. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe. Again, there's no reason to go out. Don't go out. Have a great day. Goodbye.